What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Dev Talks with your host Travian, where we talk about everything technology and engineering wise. And welcome back to another video. So, this video, we actually have a comparison between two AR headsets that are going crazy right now. So, these, not even headsets, glasses, believe, believe it or not. So, we, I believe we covered something about Meta's glasses. And then before this video comes out, we would have covered something about Snap's glasses. This video is going to be betting them both and trying to look at why these companies are really betting on these glasses. And I have a good idea why, but without further ado, let's just dive into the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out with the algorithm so much. I really appreciate it all. And let's just get into this first. You're seeing like a scoreboard above the basket that says who has the most points and then the leaderboard. Well, one of the things that's really cool about this lens is that it's connected together. It's a really fun way uh, to make playing basketball more fun, and soon there'll be a augmented reality coach as well, so you can improve your game on the court. We're finally getting a glimpse of new high-tech hardware that's been in the works for years, which tech giants say could be the next generation of computing. Give me a smoothie recipe with these ingredients, please. Meta and Snap are the first major players to unveil augmented reality, or AR, prototypes. This is Orion our first fully functioning prototype, and if I do say so, the most advanced glasses the world has ever seen. Today, we're introducing the fifth generation of spectacles. Building high-tech features into glasses isn't a new idea. Snap and Meta have both been investing in tech-enabled smart glasses for years. But these new products make a technological leap with fully holographic overlays. With Orion, we are getting closer to achieving the dream of Reality Labs, to create the next major computing platform that delivers a deep sense of presence like you were right there with another person. This is where we are going. Meta has poured more than $63 billion over the last decade into its AR and VR division, Reality Labs, which has developed its VR headsets and metaverse experiences, along with launching Ray-Ban smart glasses that feature an AI assistant. The company says demand for the glasses has been huge. But while Snap and Meta have debuted AR prototypes, they are still years away from bringing down the costs to a point where these products could be sold to consumers. And they're even... And that's the major thing. Like, one thing that I like about Meta is how much money they actually put into investing into new products and making some of their products better. I think they have really good products as far as, far as that. Like, if you compare the Meta Quest to the Vision Pro... Quest does so much stuff that a lot of people really don't realize. And just making sure it they do they do, they do so much that a lot of people don't realize, but they're also not as expensive as the Vision Pro is. And that's something that's gonna be on the mind. Like we all looked at the Vision Pro, everybody was like, Oh, these headsets are too heavy. If you guys want us to use them for these lengths of time and do all these different types of tasks and whatever, we need to find a way for them not to be as heavy. We need a way to, for them to be more comfortable. What, what percentage of the people who use our products wear glasses anyways? Can we use prescriptions with them? These are all things that like I feel like that's why they're like, hey, we can find better ways to do this. And of course, they're just super expensive. And that's why it's years away because you need technology to be cheap enough for people to go out there and actually buy them in the waves that you need them to or want them to, to be profitable and for it to be a success and for everybody to keep on using them. That's that's just what needs to happen. And they're completely right for this. That's why these companies are working on them now and it's gonna go far with it. That's why they're gonna be very popular one day. And shoot, I got the Ray-Ban prescription glasses now. Meta's doing it, making them better. We'll see how it goes out at the end, but when they first drop, uh, it might be one of my first things that I buy off of Impulse in a while. Even though it's not Impulse, because I've been covering, I'm gonna be covering these glasses for years. So we'll see how things go. Even further, even further away from being cheap enough to go mainstream. But Meta and Snap see huge opportunity. 
This is a major leap forward for technology. It's a big step forward for our sort of goal to help define the next generation of computing. We think we're at a bit of a watershed moment. People are getting fed up with their screens and the way that they make them feel, and developers are feeling frustrated about developing for the smartphone platform. So I think we're at a unique moment where both consumers and developers are really ready for something new. AR and VR are inevitabilities. They will happen. I just realized something. They don't look, the snap glasses actually don't look too comfortable. Cause where are we at 235? You look at his ear right here, like this whole shape and everything. This does not look comfortable. And as they said, you only can wear them for 45 minutes anyways before they die. But like, look at this. Like, no, that's not, this is how they should look like, hold on. Let's look at some meta ones. If I can find it. Like, look at the metal ones, right? It curves around the back of the ear. Right here. You can see them. Curves around the back of the ear. The snap ones don't look comfortable at all. Gosh, dang. They they really don't. I'm sorry. They Meta is going to win in the AR glasses department for comfortability and style. Mark my words, their smart glasses already come in a bunch of different colors. They're fashionable. They do what people need them to do. This will be even better. It's just what it is at the end of the day. Will happen. A precursor to AR, smart glasses have grown in popularity, led by Meta, which partnered with Ray-Ban to launch- Like, look at all those colors. What's in here? Look. look at... A precursor to AR, smart glasses have grown- Look, all of their smart glass colors and stuff like that. They're gonna do this for the Orion too. They going to. I, I know they're going to. Well, all these colors and stuff right here that they showing off. I, I know they're going to do that. I, <laughs> it's a bold prediction, but something like this, we're going to get something along these lines, and they're going to be comfortable. And be probably the best class you ever wore in your life. That can, and as far as a te technology, as far as a tech standpoint, all right? That's just where it's going to be at the end of the day, and... Meta wins. Grown in popularity, led by Meta, which partnered with Ray-Ban to launch smart glasses first in 2021. These things are, are doing pretty well right now in the market. You can talk to them, you can ask questions about what's happening in front of you, you can ask it to play music, you can make calls with it. They've been very popular. We've worked hard to get latency down, which is how long does it take for the assistant to respond. You want the voice interactions to be really, really close to the way you'd talk to somebody else. Snap has been tackling similar challenges, first introducing these spectacles in 2016. Now by the fourth generation, it added some basic AR capabilities, but its latest pair are far more immersive. I didn't even know Snap made glasses called spectacle. Who knew about that? If you knew Snap been doing this for this long, drop it in the comments because I didn't know at all. I haven't even heard of them doing stuff until right now. When Meta did their preview, they said, yeah, we're going to do ours too for these. Even though it ain't that much ready, we're going to do it. Hey, they did their job. But I'd never heard of them doing that stuff before. Augmented reality glasses are a massive leap from smart glasses. They not only project images on their clear display, but they also enable users to control what they see with their eyes and hands. What's so exciting about Spectacles is that it brings us closer to our vision for people using computing together, grounded in the real world with their friends. The dream of augmented and mixed reality is something tech giants have been pursuing for years. Apple has been focusing on its Vision Pro virtual reality headset, which includes cameras to orient users in their space. But we haven't yet heard from Apple if it plans to introduce glasses. And a number of efforts in this space have struggled. Apple will not give glasses because they don't want to spend the money to develop them. And when they have to do better on developing their Vision Pro first. They're just not going to do it. 
<laughs> and you know when Apple would create glasses? This is when Apple would create glasses. When every other company in... Apple will create glasses when every other company in the tech industry already has their own version. That's when Apple will create some glasses. They they barely spent money. It took them forever to even spend enough money in their R&D department for us to get Vision Pro. And they still had to put so much money into it to make it better, smaller, work faster, be graphically better as well to work on their works. They have so much work to do. It, it's it's not funny. Like it's, still, I want to use them, see how good of a product it is, and whatnot. But they're not going to give you no glasses until everybody else already has them. That that's just what it is. Mark my words. It is what it is. Gold. Google was first to market with Google Glass back in 2013. The product was expensive and drew criticism. Now, more than a decade later, this year, it teased a new pair of glasses. Microsoft has also worked on AR for well over a decade, launching its HoloLens headset for enterprise in 2016. Failing to gain traction, Microsoft discontinued it on October 1st. And an early player in AR, Magic Leap, raised more than $2.3 billion from Google, Alibaba, JP Morgan, and others. Recently, it slashed its staff, pivoting from making headsets to partnering with the likes of Google to license its technology. And with that decade of tech giant struggles, the industry is still in the early stages. AR has been around for like 50 years. And we can ignore most of that because in the last 10, 12 years is the commercialized era of it. We're in our adolescence. We see a lot of potential, but we haven't quite reached that potential yet. <laughs> this is so crazy. Oh, nice shot. Meta's vision is to make its AR glasses as easy to use and as useful as a smartphone. It's the most advanced pair of glasses ever made. It's lightweight. It's got a really powerful computing in it. They project a high It has hand and eye tracking on it. So we just covered a video that came out before this that said Snap won't have any eye tracking. At least right now it doesn't, but Meta has hand and eye tracking. And another thing you can see on the screen real quick, multitask, text messages, doing something else. They are so far ahead on their space. It's it's not even funny how far ahead Meta is on a lot of this stuff. Like, you compare these glasses one to one between Snap. Like Snap does some good stuff, mind you. They have some good things part of their glasses, but these are the differences right here, the big differences. Right right here, the multitasking alone. You you can't get this out of the other product right now. That's why I said Snap is still important, but. It won't be number one. It, it just it just won't be the most sold AR glass set out there. Holographic display so that you can summon a screen or you can look at your messages, you can watch video, you can have a video chat with somebody. What has been your intention when working on these augmented reality glasses on this prototype? What are you driving for? If you think about the history of computing in general, we started with computers in basements. They gradually made their way onto our desktops and then they've made their way into our pockets and our purses with smartphones. We've been thinking for a while about what's the next thing after the phone? It's probably gonna look like a lightweight, attractive, comfortable pair of glasses. With these AR devices, just like with smart glasses, AI is center stage. How important is AI in building this hardware and how important is AI in terms of the user interface? It's essential. I mean, every single piece of what we just talked about requires AI. Computer vision, understanding the world in front of you, speech and natural interface, that's difficult and requires AI. As Meta continues investing in Orion hardware, its developers are working on creating software and apps to run on it. We are going to use Orion as a dev kit. Um, we are going to use it mostly internally to build out the software that we need to, but we're also going to work with a handful of partners externally to make sure that we get a diversity of content. So that way, when we have the next version of this hardware, it is going to be ready to be our first consumer full holographic AR glasses. 
Meanwhile, Snap wants an ecosystem of experiences and games for its new hardware and operating system. So it's renting glasses to developers for $99 a month. We've initially focused on our developer community. So there are hundreds of thousands of developers who are already using Lens Studio to build millions of lenses. We've tried to really lower the barrier to folks getting started with this new technology. So they'll get spectacles and Snap support to bring their imagination to life. Niantic, creator of Pokemon Go, the viral AR smartphone game, has brought a few of its apps over to Spectacles. We chose to work with Snap because they're one of the first companies actually, you know, getting these glasses working. Snap, their view is more focused based on their DNA about the social and the communication aspects of it. You can argue that Meta and Facebook is very similar, but they started looking broader. AR technology has made huge leaps in the past decade. Meta's earlier prototypes required backpacks and fans to hold and cool computing components. The technical challenges to make them are insane. Um, you know, they, they need to be glasses. They're not a headset, no wires, less than 100 grams. It is a absolutely incredible amount of technology to be able to miniaturize and fit into a pair of glasses and a small puck that goes with it to help power the whole thing. But for all of that progress, there are still myriad obstacles to building the AR ecosystem to make it worth buying these devices. There's three issues, content, convenience, and control. Content, what am I gonna do with this? Convenience, is it easy for me to get? Is it easy for me to set up? How am I going to interact with this, right? Am I touching things? Am I doing pinch swipe zoom? You need all of those things to make it come together. So with years before these products are sold to consumers, the question is how to justify the massive R&D cost, especially for Snap. We have yet to see augmented reality go mainstream. Why does it make sense to invest so much in this at a time when your stock is down? I think the reason why we're so convinced that AR glasses are the path forward is because people are getting tired of screens. Glasses are a way to use computing that, that actually brings us together and keeps us you know, connected with the real world. And while Meta's stock has been on a tear, investors are still curious about the payoff of its R&D. Why are you investing so much in this technology and how will it eventually tie into your business? We wanted to show the demo to people just to show what we've been working on. We've been investing for this for a long time just because we are asking the question sort of what comes after the smartphone. The key to commercializing these new devices is bringing down costs. Meta says it aims to sell its glasses at the price point of a high-end smartphone. I want to keep working on the design to make it smaller and a bit more fashionable. We need to keep working on the manufacturing to make it a lot more affordable too. With these prototypes, you got to start with something that is the North Star. Orion is that. And then you find ways to optimize, bring down cost, bring uh, up performance. The price point depends on the value it delivers. If it can do everything and anything, I would say the price point has to be around the range of a smartphone. If it's single purpose, you know, very purpose built device that can do kind of one thing, it needs to be much cheaper. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I feel like we kind of get the point of these two glasses and whatnot, but one, Snap is making this because they need a new product because Snapchat is failing. No way Snapchat can last that long, especially as a social media app. It's it's just gotten taken advantage of too much for it to be successful in any way. But the glasses were going to help them. And the next thing for Meta that they're really focused on, I think the price point of a uh, iPhone or like a smartphone now is a good price point to have for these glasses. Not a $3,000, $3,500 Vision Pro headset. No, that's not a good price point. That's why I feel like it's, it's not doing as good as it could. But when you get to that kind of, hey, what can it do and everything, if it can almost replace your phone and it brings us something that's completely new, then yes, I feel like that's something that will work out. It will be fine completely and we'll be able to grow it from there in that point. But without further ado, let me know what you guys think between these two AR glasses and the future that we're going towards these glasses. Do you think you'll ever buy one? If you do buy one, what are some things you would like it to do on it? And without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, please. I really appreciate it. Uh, it helps out the channel so much and we're growing. 
on the road to 500 subs next. Really appreciate it. And without further ado, have a good time. See you next time.